Okay, looks like everyone can see that. So like as Vivi said, I'm going to be talking about building a serverless backend using Firebase today. And first of all, we're going to, um, oops. I'm going to introduce you to the session. So we're, I'm going to be building a, a, a RESTful, like favorite code API using Firebase and JavaScript. And then I'm going to be explaining some serverless concepts to you guys. And then we're going to go into the workshop and um, building a favorite code REST API. And then at the end, I'm just going to talk about what we built and then maybe some action items. Um, hopefully you guys are ready because I'm ready. So um, let's, uh, let me just navigate on to um, there. All right, so serverless computing. I don't know if any one of you guys have come across this concept, but the whole concept of this is that it just enables developers like myself or like you to like build our web applications or mobile applications without thinking about managing servers. So some of the providers that offer these services, they allow us to just focus on writing the code while they focus on managing the service as well as and trying to grow it. Some of the existence um, providers are um, Azure by Microsoft, AWS by Amazon, and um, um, Google Cloud Platform by Google. Um, and they offer services, services, or you can do things like um, use your database storage, or you can also, if you're into um, big data, you can also use um, services on there as well. So I'm using um, the Google Cloud um, Platform service by Firebase because it's just a lot more intuitive. I've used it before. I like how um, easy it is to set up the backend using this, and it's just um, I like the developer experience using the platform. That's why I'm using it. And like I said before, when you use um, when you decide to you know outsource managing your servers, it's better to use um, go with serverless computing because it saves you time, it saves you money, and you don't have to pay for what you're not using. So that's just a general overview about um, serverless and computing. So I guess it's time for us to dive in. So workshop time. We're building a RESTful API today, and I'm just going to navigate to my, um, sorry, oops, let me just come out of this. Hopefully you guys can still see this. I'm just going to go to, okay. So right now I have um, my folder that I've already created. I call the, the code codes app and it has one directory there. I decided to do this before time just to save time um, while we're doing that. Let me open up the terminal. That should come up any moment now. So the first thing, um, what we're going to be using here, we're going to be using um, vanilla JavaScript as well as Firebase to build it. And in order to like set up all of this, um, in order for us to start building our project, we first have to install Node. So I've gone ahead and installed Node, and in order to check if you have Node on your system, you just write in Node version, and this should um, tell you what Node version that you currently have. So once you've um, noted that you've got that in there, then you're good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is um, initialize my application. So let me just a second. Um, I would first initialize, so when you download Node, it comes with um, NPM, and NPM is a, a package manager. It enables us to download any packages that we might want to use for our project. So I'm just going to run NPM init here, which initializes this application. And once that's done, um, I want to call my package name code codes app, and this is the version number. I'm going to just put, I want my entry points to be um, index.js. No commands there. I'm going to keep all of this. I'm going to be the author for this. And everything is all set up. That's all well and good. After we've done this, we can then go on to Firebase to create our project um, on the Firebase platform. So I'm just going to navigate to there. So you need to, if you've not signed up for Firebase before, you need to create an account. And once you create an account, you can then go to the Firebase console. And then it will show you something like this. So here I'm going to create um, the project that we're going to be now. And I'm going to call, call it code, code, um, app. And then I'll click on continue. 
And then um, I'm going to select the accounts that I'm going to be using, which is my account that I created with them. So if you've got a um, Google account, it's fine. You can just um, use this. So one great thing about um, Firebase is that it allows us to use some of the Google Cloud platforms like Firebase Functions as well as um, Firestore, which is the two things that we're going to be using for um, this workshop today. So while that is just like um, cooking up, trying to set up our projects, um, you should see everything set up in a bit. Sun is really shining. <laughs> I'm going to continue here and um, you should show us what our platform currently looks like. So right now, um, you can see on the left-hand side, we've got authentication, Firestore database, um, real-time real -time database, which are, as well as storage and functions as well. So we are going to be using the because we want to create a, um, create a user via our API endpoints. So if I just click on get started, you can see how, it, you would just see how easy, easy for me to set up um, authentication on my application. So I want to do this by just email and password, and I'm going to come on here and save that. So the next thing that I also want to use um, use on this platform is also the Firestore database. And this database uses um, a no SQL um, format. And I'm going to put that on test mode right now because our, our API wouldn't be ready for production. So if whenever you're creating your project, um, depending on the region that you are, you need to pick that region, region um, that's closest to you. I'm currently in Manchester, UK, so I'm going to um, pick um, Europe, West. So I'm going to enable that. And once that's enabled, um, it should take some time to um, just, you know, set all of that up. I think while that's um, running, we can we can check. We can go back to our application and try to. Um, oops, sorry. Okay, so that's all um, set up for that. Um, so how the um, no SQL database works here is that we can start a collection. So a collection can hold multiple documents, which can hold the data that we want to store in our um, cloud Firestore. And then lastly, we're going to be using the um, functions, function service as well. And in order to use this, we need to um, upgrade um, to a Blaze plan. So one of the things I mentioned is how like some of the serverless um, services enables us to use some of the backend services without um, you know, paying a lot of money for it. So you only pay for what you use. Um, at this point in time, I'm just going to say $1 um, and set a budget for that. But before you actually start paying um, money for it, you have to get a lot of traffic to your app. So um, don't worry about that. So once that's all set up, I can then go on to here. So you can see that it's um, advised us to install the Firebase tools onto our application. So if I just navigate back to my application here, um, I'm going to um, install that. And I'm using um, some of the tools that are going to be installed. We need access to some parts of my system that would need um, root access. So that's why I use sudo to do that. If I didn't use that, I was going to get an error. So and that should download at any moment now. So while that's downloading, I'm, I'm back into my Firebase um, console here. And if I press on continue, once the Firebase tools are installed, um, I can then initialize um, these functions in my application and then we can start building our application there. So I'm just gonna finish that and go back to see if we've done this. Once our functions are created, um, they will be shown on this um, on this um, page here. And then we can also look at the logs to see if there are any issues with our functions as well. So let's go back to see if um, things are being downloaded. So that's still running. So what these functions are basically going to help us with is, is just store all the functionality of each of our endpoints that we're going to be creating for this project. And now that that's downloaded, the next thing that I want to do is run Firebase init. So, um, initializing our initializing the app. That. So what Firebase in, in it does is just basically um, preparing my project to 
start my work. So right now I can choose the services that I want to use. And we want to use Firestore where we're going to be saving um, any data that we send via our API point, as well as Firebase functions. Um, and that's all we're going to be using. So if I enter, we want to use an existing project. So if you remember, we created an existing project, which is the code quote app that we just created on Firebase. I'm going to click on that. Um, and then we're going to just leave the default rules for now, as well as the default for the indexes. And then we want to use JavaScript for this. We're not going to enable ESLint um, yet, but if you wanted to, so what ESLint does is just make sure that um, when you're typing your code, you're, from, you're following a specific format. Um, we want to download all the dependencies that we need. So we just click on yes while that's downloading. So all of this stuff is just setting up our projects in order to get us ready to start writing our endpoints for um, the API that we would like to build. So that might take a couple of, um, of minutes to do that, which is absolutely fine. Um, so while that's downloading, let's see. Okay, so you can see that um, now that we've initialize that we have this new function that we did not create ourselves, which is called functions. So inside our functions directory, we've got the node modules. This is um, a directory that just holds all the packages that we're going to be using for our project. And um, git ignore, ignores file that we don't want to commit to git. And the index.js file is going to be the entry point for our application. And you can see that it has a simple um, hello world endpoint right there, which we're going to be coming back to. While this package addition file just shows us um, some of the scripts that we can run, as well as shows us um, the packages that we've downloaded. So at the moment, we just in, as well as Firebase functions, which we're going to be using um, for our project today. Okay, that's all well and good. I'm just going to navigate into my functions directory. And once we've navigated into there, um, some other things we're also going to need um, about two or three other other um, packages in order to start writing our application. So we're going to install um, we're going to install Express. We already have Firebase admin, so I'll take that out. We're going to install Express as well as Quartz. Um, and well, I will just explain what that's, that is for. So Express is basically um, a very lightweight web application framework that is that helps us um, manage the server side of our application. So when it comes to things like routine, handling requests, etc., we use Express for that. And, and then Cause enables us to um, give access to one domain to another domain. So for example, if you're trying to send a, or get access to a particular resource from a different domain from your domain, if you enable Cause, um, you will not get any error once you, once you use that. So that's why we downloaded that package. So we've got these two packages in there. Which is great. I think um, at this point in time, we are ready for um, to start writing some good. I probably like talked to you guys for a long period of time, but before that, I'm just going to take this source directory and put that into our functions directory because that's where we want it. And um, that's just going to show all the other folders that we're going to be working with. So now that we've um, installed our, all our packages, let let's just um, uncomment this. And you can see that this is just uh, like a function, Xbox hello. And then this is a, a request that we're going to be using. So we imported functions from Firebase functions. And then we want to handle a request. And in this case, um, if I run an npm run serve, which is, which is the command you know, to like um, run our application and give us endpoints that we want. That should take a while. And once I run this, we should get hello from Firebase sent back to us in a bit. Um, you can see that's currently running. And right now we've got our um, we've got our endpoints published here. So if I click this, you can see that this says hello from Firebase, which we've got from our app here. So that's like um, absolutely working, which is um, great. So now that we've got this, we can then start writing our own um, applications. So before I, I talk about that, I'm just going to explain what um, 
what directories we're going to be using for this. So I've got a root directory, which is going to hold all our roots for this um, application. I've got also a model directory that we're going to use to model like our code codes when we're trying to create it and store it into a database. And then I've also got a controllers a directory, which would hold um, the code for the logic when we hit our, hen our endpoint for our project. And then finally, I've got um, an auth directory that's going to have a middleware to authenticate our users when we go to specific endpoints on this application. So um, now that we want to um, write that, sorry, I'm just going to take all of this out. So we're going to firstly import um, some of the movie things that we downloaded. We're going to um, import Express. We're also going to import cores. So, and then once we've imported that, we're going to um, create our app. So, app also express. So we've initialized that, saying that we want our app to use express, and that's about app with the three P's. And then we want to say that our app should use. So right here, I'm trying to say that whatever request that we're going to get in to our endpoint, we want it to use, we want to, we're expecting the request to be in JSON format. And then we're also going to say app.use, um, app.use course. And then we can set that this, this is the origin. Set that to true, that we type properly, sorry. Then at the bottom here, um, I want to export this app as API instead. You see, um, it has the on request. So you can see we've got things like on call, on requests, which are some of the things that we can do with Firebase. Um, we've got function triggers that we can use, but for this case, we're only going to be um, working with um, HTTPS requests. So that's why we've got the on, and then we can pass, pass our app in here. So previously, we had the, the um, hello um, endpoint which we used. So now we're going to be using a different one if you guys are familiar with the crude, um, crude, if you guys are familiar with the crude syntax where we got um, the create, read, update, and delete, and we're going to be using Express to do that. So if I call the get, I can go on here and say hello. And what this takes is it first takes the endpoint that we want, which is the first parameter I pass into it, and then the second parameter it takes uh, um, the callback function. So in this and request and the response. And then inside of here, we can decide to do what we want with it. So in this case, we you say, when you come to a log, um, hello, Oops. So hello, or we want to then also send back, send, um, hello, um, hello. And so you can see um, that um, we've got our, our get request, we've got the endpoint, and we've also got the callback function. And this, in this case, it's not doing a lot. And if we just come back to our, come back to here, and we try to run this again. So if I try to run this again, and then I have, when, once this is um, deployed on our um, functions and I, and I go back to that endpoint and I go to slash hello, I should get hello from Omotola. So if we come back to our... So right now it says, can I get get because th that doesn't have any endpoints. But if I do hello, do that, it says hello from Omotola. So that works, which is great. 
So now that we've done this, um, that's all well and good. So at this point, we can then have our other endpoints. We can have the um, any other get request that we want, um, a post request, a push request, and a delete request, just like how you, you do it with your um, cloud applications. Um, but what's going to happen now is I want to make this a little bit more um, more um, structured. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import a roots.config file. And then I want that to be coming from the file. Um, so. And that can go with file and roots of config.js file. So what's going to happen in this um, roots of config file, which I have got in here, um, inside of here, we're going to have um, so time, thing that I had before, and we are going to have that in there. So. What I've just simply done here is I have the same API root, and then um, I've just said my get request and my, my endpoint hello, and my request uh, request and response body. It's just the same thing that we've written here, but the only thing is that um, I'm, I'm trying to make this a bit fuller. So if I come back to here, um, instead of having this here, I would take all of this out, and then I'll say roots config, and then passing our app here. So that should work the same way um, that we did before. And just to prove that that worked, here yeah, we'll just say hello, hello again. Run this again. And we go back to that endpoint, we'll see that we're getting the same response. And then finally, we can then start creating our first, um, our first route, which we can create inside our roots directory. So just showing you this again. So I'll come back to here. Hello. And we've got the same hello again. It shows you that it works, which is great. So if I come back to the application, now that we've got this, you can see that our index.js file is very like and simple, and then we can go into our apps and then make, make it a bit more robust there. So the second endpoint that we want to create is um, our api.post response. So I'm going to say um, they should have a create. And then inside of there, the same request response body press. And then inside of there. Oh, sorry. Um, so instead of having a function here, instead I want all our functions to be inside um, of the controllers. So I'm just gonna um, write create in here. And then I'm going to import that logic from const um, create. So, And then I have controls. And you have the user does the JS. Sorry, second. Um, so we want to have the create in there. And we're going to route it to HRC. Not that uh, we want controllers. Controllers. Slash users. That's user controller. So that one. Sorry. Address. 
So that's going to be imported here. So what we want is to get that from inside of this controller folder that we've created here. So right now this is um, currently empty, but um, save time, I've got um, this already here. So um, I'm going to be taking this from inside of here. And if I would explain what's happening here. So um, first of all, I've um, imported my credentials from um, db.js, which is a file that I'm going to show you in a bit. And then this is going to be the logic for when we hit the endpoint for creating a user. So um, instead of here, because this is um, an asynchronous call to our endpoint, we first of all um, write the function as we will. We destructure our request body, and in this case, we're expecting a display name, a password, and an email address. If um, we don't get the display name or the password or email address, then we send back a 400 message saying that we've got missing fields. If not, then we can use um, the admin SDK that we've got here to then create our user, and then that should then return us a UID. And then um, we, we can send the status of 201 and then UID as well. And then if there are any errors like network issues or et cetera, then we're going to um, just write, we're going to have this error come back to us. And we have like a function to handle that as well, which I'll probably be in. I want to show you what's inside our db.js. So basically, we have to go back to, um, sorry, we have to go back to um, our Firebase control. So um, for our, uh, in order to do anything like authentication, etc., we need some permissions from Firebase. So we've navigated to the permissions um, tab. And then when we go onto um, service accounts, we should be able to generate a key. That should just come up any moment now. So you can see that here it says with Node.js. So if you generate a new key, so I'm just going to generate the key here. And once that key is generated, we are going to save it in the desktop. We're going to save it in our functions directory at the root. And then we're going to save that as um, permissions. We save that there. So I'm going to save that. And then if we navigate back to here, you can see that we've got our permissions directory here. So inside our DB file, um, let's just, um, where is it? We've got, um, so inside of here, that should be inside our functions directory as well. So inside our DB file, we are going to basically take what was inside um, here. So if I copy this and I come back to here, you can see that um, we have essentially um, imported our Firebase admin SDK. And then we need to navigate to where our permissions file that we just downloaded is. So if I just go on to permissions.js, so that's there. And then that's going to initialize our um, initialize that for our app, and then we're able to use that anywhere that we want. So now that we've got that um, sorted out, we can then go back to our controller where we had our user controller in there, and then this is where we imported the admin from our db.js, which is there, and then we're able to um, use that to create our user. And so for this handle um, error as well, we've got a custom function to handle that. If there are any errors that comes through, we send a 500 status code as well as the message for whatever errors that we got. And last but not least, we export um, our function, which is create. And that's how we're able to import it inside our roots here. So you can see that we've been able to do that. So if I just come back to my app and then try to run, um, we're going to see how we're, we can test this with um, Postman in a bit. So what Postman is, is it's um, basically a software application that enables us to test our API links. I think we have an error. So it's struggling to find um, source controller. 
Um, let me just write that in again. Fire. Instead of the, I'm using also if we oops, that error came back. So let's try that again. So that's um, been, um, you can see that that's run again. And now we currently have our endpoint there. So if I just copy this and then I come to Postman. So I, I currently have some directories in here. So we want to create a user. So creating a user. So um, we're going to paste our endpoint there and say create. That's what we've called it. And now this is going to be expecting um, a body um, adjacent request. So right now we've got the display name, that's my name, and then just a generic password, and then um, an email address. And so if we send this, what we should be expecting back is a UID sent back to us. Um, if I mean, oh, it's not a function. Okay, it seems we have um, an error with admin. So if I just come back to here, so inside our user controller, um, I mean, oh, it's not a function. So that might be because we've not navigated correctly to where our db.js is. So, Uh, let's see, um, instead of here, we've also not exported this. So, um, okay. Oops. export. Let's um, Okay, so those are the two issues. So sometimes I can forget to do stuff, but once you realize what the problem is, you're able to bounce back. So hopefully that should work now that I have um, exported this. So that's just running again. And then I can come back here and copy my, my links. Oops. Just copy that. Go back to here. I paste that. And set so create link and I send that again. You can see now that we've got it back to us. And then if we navigate back to um, our Firebase console, we come back to the authentication um, area. You can see that I have created that user just using um, the API link, which is great. So we've managed to do our first API um, endpoints using Firebase backend, which is amazing. So now let's look at how we can um, create the endpoint for our code. So come back here, we can come back to our, um, our roots.config and just to save time, because we've got a lot of time here, we, just to show you the other endpoints that um, I've got or we can add to this. So if I put all of that in there, so we can see that we've got another post request that is creating um, creating the puts, another one that gets all of them, another one that just gets a single one, one that updates the puts and one that deletes it. And you can see that I've just got an individual um, um, function name called here. So what um, how this is good is that we can then import all of this from our code codes controller. So in this case, we've got um, create code. So create um, code puts um, and then and then require require this from 
Come into here. Controllers. Oh, again, that, that includes controller. Um, and then we can come here and save that. So now if we go onto our code controller inside of here, it's empty, but I am going to um I'm going to take this from my helper file that I have here and then go into that in. So once again we're using our um our DB that we've just um imported here. So what this does is just gives us access to some of the things like creating stuff in the Firestore or like trying to create a user, for example. Um, and so if we come back to code codes, we've imported that again. We're going to be using the um, code codes model for when we're trying to get back all our codes back. And so this is the function that we want. First of all, we have to um, get the SDK for the Firestore. So that's why we've got admin.firestore here. And so this is our function. We say um, const create codes, and then we've got the request body and rest. So we've got next here for if we need to do something else after we've um, something else after we finish hitting our endpoint, and we want to like um, want to pass the functionality to a different um, function. For example, that's what we need that for. But in this function, we're not going to be using it. And um, if we've got time, I'll show you where that's um, useful. And so in this case, we've got um, DB, which we've created here. And then we reference the collection. And then we want to call it code codes. So for each collection, it has a document which is unique to whatever data that we're saving. And then we can create um, the author. Um, we, can create the, um, we can create the data that we want inside of there. And in this case, we just have the author and the quotes, quote, et cetera. And so once that's saved, then we get the code codes have been stored. And then if there's an error, we send back a 500 error, for example. So now, now that that's all done, we're going to then um, export this. So what we're just going to do is module dot export. And then we're going to say create um, code codes. So um, now that we've got that um, inside of here, we've um, imported it. Let's see if we're creating the same thing. Yep. Okay. So th that's the endpoint for that. So um, I'm just going to copy that. Um, and then I'll try to deploy this again. We can run serve. And that should take just a couple of minutes to run that. Um, Okay, so this is just currently complaining because we've not got some of the um, other endpoints currently imported. So for now, I'm just going to um, uncomment that. And that should load us our endpoints now. So we've gotten that. So if I come back to put and I want to create a code, put put. Um, And this should have the body item there. And then my code codes, it said, who said coding is easy? Um, and I can then send that to here. So if I send this as a post request, you should get a message saying um, our, code, our code codes has been saved. So code codes have been stored successfully. And then if we navigate the store, You can see that it has code codes the collection, and then we've got the unique document ID, and then the data that we wanted to save, which is um, the auto and now, and says who said code codes coding is easy. If we wanted to do that again, we can store another. Um, uh, uh, service, so, 
and then if I send that that start as well and if we come back to here you can see that the code code is saved as well so that works which is great and I'm just going to show you one more last one which is this one and hopefully um, you guys have enjoyed this enough and you can try and um, try try making the other ones work um, at the end of the session, we're going to share um, some of the resources as well as source code for this. So I'm just going to add um, the functionality for getting all code codes. So I've got that here. Um, so I've got that in here. So this is the second function. So all this is happening here is we want to get all the code codes. So what we're going to do is first of all, try to get the, the collection of code codes, which we've, we've seen just right now in our Firebase console. And then we, we then get each document and that's going to save it in our um, variable called data. And then we have the code codes array. If this um, data is empty, that means we didn't get anything. We can send back a 404 message saying no records found. If it's not empty, then we want to um, use a for each loop to go through each document and then create it as a, as an object and then push it into our array here. So you can see that we've got this code code um, object, which I'm going to show you in a bit. And then once we've pushed all our codes inside of this, we're going to push it into the array and then send it back um, to our endpoint, our endpoint there. Or if there are any errors, then we're going to get um, a 404 message sent back to us so our model is really simple oh sorry just letting you know you have five minutes left before q okay <laughs> all right um i'm just going to be rounding up soon uh cool so this is the um code code class so um this is just constructor we're getting the id author and quotes which is great, and um, we've exported it. And instead of here, we've got, um, we've imported it here. And so we can use it inside of this app, and then we can export this. So if we come on here to get all the puts, that should be fine. Um, and then I'm just going to run that again. And Hopefully, um, when that runs, we should be able to go and post this. Um, get our code codes. It's not defined. Have I imported this? No, I haven't. Um, try into my loops. Yep. That's all. That's it. So that that was error now because I didn't have. I didn't have that imported. So now that I have that imported, I can then take that from here and then navigate back to our endpoints, get all code codes inside of here. Uh, okay, and then if I run this, we should be able to get all the code codes sent back to us. You can see that all of that is then sent back to us and the two code codes are just done, which is great. So you can do other things like get just a single one or update it or delete it, etc. We don't have a lot of time, but I would have loved to show you how we can authenticate like a user and um, to get like a specific um, or go to a specific endpoint. What would have happened here is I would have created the authentication inside of here. And then the good thing about this is that we can just um, um, install uh, imports um, is authenticated, right? And then because your um, fire, fire, um, authenticated. And so, if we, if for example, we wanted a user to be authenticated before we, they are able to create quotes, for example, we can just go on here and say it's authenticated. And then, if they are, then they'll be able to create um, the code 
right there. But if they're not, they wouldn't be able to do that. But because of time, I wouldn't be able to show you this, but I already have all the source code and written and saved in my GitHub repository, which was going to be shared um, at the end of this workshop. And hopefully you guys um, have seen or how it was, I was able to do this really quickly um, and um, you know set everything up in order to create this REST API. If we had a bit more time, we'd probably be able to finish the other ones, but we don't. But I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to um, create a RESTful API using Firebase and how to create users and authentic authenticate them. So hopefully you guys um, enjoy this and um, you're able to take this and you know flesh it out and try it out yourself because it's really easy um, and makes it really fun as well. Wow, that was uh, fantastic. Uh, great job, Omotola. Uh, thank you so much for giving that talk and you made uh, something very difficult look really easy. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, would you like to share um, the resources in the chat or would you like me to do that? Um, yeah, so I could, let me just let me stop sharing now. Okay. I could, um, I think I've got that here somewhere. You got it? Yep. All right. Um, I can share that in the chat right now. So okay. I've got a couple. So there's the source code. Um, it's, it's like a lot of links. I'm just pushing out to see you guys right now. Well, I was sharing uh, the resources from her talk. I'm going to try again to. Uh, give the a better introduction now that I can actually see the whole description. So Omotola yeah. is a junior software engineer at Ampersand uh, UK. She has a genuine interest in learning, building software, sharing her knowledge and advocating for more underrepresented groups to join the tech. When she is not doing any of the above, she likes to read, dance and cook a great meal. So thank you. I hope I did a better job this time. Uh, so we uh, have a couple of questions. Uh, one of them is actually from me. Uh, do you think you can give like a very brief uh, definition of what serverless means and how is that different from uh, hosting a service on on the server? Okay, thank you. So the idea of serverless is to remove um, managing servers away from the developer so all we just have to do is um plug into services like um, gcp or aws or azure and they're going to give us services like trying to save um, our data or if we're trying to do things like authentication or if we're trying to uh, um, database resources as well or even machine learning we're able to do this without actually handing um configuring service for the back end because if you work as a backend developers in the past, you needed to be able to set up your servers in order for you to interact with it. But in this case, we don't um, we don't think about doing that anymore. Google or Amazon, they have their own servers far, far away from us that we don't see. And all we just see is just interacting with all these nice platforms to give us the services that we want to work with. So did that answer your question, Bill? You? Yeah, that's uh, fantastic. Um, I just wanted to clear that up because I know if I had that question, I'm sure other people did as well. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Amy had a question earlier. Uh, I tried to answer it, but she was asking, once you have the back end built, how do you connect the front end to that? Oh, that's um, a great question. So um, there are different ways that you can connect the um, back end to the front end. So for example, if we're using like React, for example, so I created the application every single time I hit um, npm run serve or npm run um, or Firebase deploy, it's going to literally like deploy all the links as, as a link. And so you take that link and you can plug it to your front end application. So if um, I was trying to, if I have a form, just imagine you have a form that you can type in um, the author's name and the code that you want to submit. And so if you then take that link and, and put it where you click the button, it should send the same request to that link, and then you can get your result. So just hypothetically, that's how you plug it. So you use the link, you plug it to your front end application, and that's how it works. 
Great. Uh, I'm just seeing, I don't know if there were any other questions. I'm just scrolling through the, the chat real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, uh, lots of very uh, positive feedback. Uh, seems like a lot of people really enjoy uh, your work. Yeah. <laughs> And a lot of people are looking forward to uh, watching the video and picking up all the all the fine details. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want me to also plug this to a front end application, please do indicate, and I'll be able to do that as well. All right. Let's see. And you've posted the yes. Resources. So um, if you wanted to read more um, about Firebase. Um, and also watch about the GC platform. So uh, uh, this one, so you can read on this one, as well as what the relationship between Firebase and Gold Cloud platform is. I've also got that. And also, if you just wanted to get a quick overview of what the GCP platform is all about, you can also watch a short video as well. Oops, I hope I'll stop posting something multiple times. I think there is one more question. I don't know if you've already addressed it. If you recommend any resources uh, on how to connect the front end to the back end. Uh, sorry, one second. Um, sorry. Try to copy this link and put it there. Yeah. So you said if I recommend any resources on how to connect the front end to the back end. Um, off the top of my head, no. But um, let me see. Um, Perhaps I think I've had one other one. I think you can check this one out. This might be helpful. This is just like a, an article that talks about um oops, there. But there are like many articles like online that will show you how if you just like Google how to um, connect your uh, REST API to a front end application, you see loads of articles come out come out and then you can just pick anyone depending on what languages you're like comfortable with using. Um, to code. All right. Um, any more questions we have for Omotola? You're welcome. Um, okay. Well, uh, thank you so much. Um, that was an amazing talk. And thank you for having me. Um, I, I wish I was able to finish it in time, but it was just, I've tried to cram a lot of things in the 50 minutes and mark that I did. But like, if you're really interested, you can check um, the GitHub repository that I shared and you can see the full thing um, there as well. Fantastic. All right, thanks everyone for attending and I'll see everyone at the rest of the conference. And thanks again, Omotola, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.